Good afternoon. Uh, Yin, okay. Good afternoon, uh, the participants. We'll come back uh, after lunch uh, to the last session of the conference. Uh, today we will welcome all the dean of the uh, faculty and the hospital uh, in the health science center to give us the, the multidisciplinary approach for the COVID-19 situation that uh, we already know about the pandemic of the COVID-19 affect a lot uh, to the whole country also in the uh, all the health science centers. So we would uh, hear the thing that happened here in the health science center and also what uh, we do and we should do in the future. Uh, the first uh, that I would like to introduce uh, to give the talk about the COVID-19 here is uh, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Dilok Pia Yotai. He is the Dean of the Faculty of the Medicine at uh, Thammasat University. Please welcome Professor, uh, Associate Professor Dilok, please. So, but uh, uh, in uh, the next five or seven minutes, I will share uh, our experience of the Faculty of Medicine in the COVID-19 era. Uh, we all know that uh, COVID-19 affects a lot to the society, not in only the healthcare system, but uh, in every aspect of the society. So uh, in the role of the Faculty of Medicine, the main uh, mission of our faculty, as we might know that uh, we responsible for the uh, academic affair, research affair, and healthcare service affair. But, but uh, for our spirit of university, we, uh, you might know about the word of Thomasat for people. We have to be responsible for taking care of the people in the society as well. So I, I will share our experience in the COVID-19 that cover in every aspect that we are responsible for. So the... The first thing I uh, like to share is about the main uh, mission of our faculty, about the uh, teaching and learning. Uh, in the past year, we, uh, enc we encourage our staff uh, and push them very much to apply the technology in our uh, teaching and learning aspect, but, but it's very hard to the staff, to the student to apply this in the past year. But, but uh, since the COVID-19 start early last year uh, uh, in the policy that we have to prevent the uh, spreading of the disease in the, some protocol, we have to keep distance from each other. We have to protect ourselves from uh, infected and protect uh, the other from uh, spreading of the disease. So the learning will be a problem if we can, cannot uh, manage it very well. So, so online teaching, online learning uh, was the answer for the, the system at the time. So in, uh, not, uh, in only a few months only that we can apply technology in the system is very fast, faster than we expect. Because as I, as I mentioned that we try very hard for years for applying this, but, but it's very, not very successful, but it uh, success in only a few months after COVID spreading. So online learning and teaching, our staff, our students uh, are very familiar to the system now. We can apply the technology as, uh, for example, the lab demonstration online, teaching online, or the chapter of the e-learning that uh, we get much and much more in uh, the, the past months. So this is uh, the first example of the experience of our faculty. The uh, extra from the learning and teaching in the faculty, we have uh, some mission about teaching the people, uh, giving advice, giving information to the people outside the faculty as well. So we have a ch channel in the YouTube to uh, give information about the COVID-19 to the people in the world. Uh, we have a session about the, uh, how to prepare ourselves to uh, 
be very safe from COVID-19, uh, uh, how we can interpret what we learn, what we hear from the news about uh, investigation of COVID-19, what about the vaccine. So the, the knowledge that very difficult for people, we make it easier for people to understand very well via the YouTube channel of, of the uh, Thammasat. Uh, medicine to you, or, or in Thai we call Pop Mo Thammasat, or in English, meeting with Thammasat physician. That's the uh, the channel that we can uh, communicate with the people in the society. And the other, the role of our faculty is te teaching the people in the uh, faculty as well. We try to be the example for the society how to prevent ourselves from spreading or infect with COVID-19, how can we apply the protocol for our staff, how to uh, work, uh, why we have to keep distance from each other, how to uh, keep the hygiene that uh, safe from COVID-19. This is the, the way that we communicate with the people in our faculty. And the other thing, uh, uh, we cooperate with the other leading medical school in Thailand, such as Sirilat, Lama Thipadi, and Chua Rongkorn. We create a channel for the people to ask the question about COVID-19 via telephone, via live, or via the, uh, Instagram, for example. That's, that, that's the, the way we serve the people. And of course, uh, I myself, as uh, working as the committee or advisor to the policy maker in the country. Uh, we uh, cooperate with the other faculty of medicine in Thailand to give advice to the government how to implement the protocol to protect our people in the country from COVID-19. Uh, and as you know that uh, we work very hard early last year and we continue the protocol uh, for several months, and we can control the COVID-19 very well. And then we, we, we are ranking as the uh, first five country in the world that uh, we have the best practice in COVID-19 prevention. So this is the example that we work with the other uh, organization in the country. And uh, in the other aspect of our mission about the research and innovation, uh, the faculty give the funding for the staff and students to do the research uh, uh, about the COVID-19. And this is the example of the publication in the Scopus uh, uh, database. Uh, we have a study about the psychological factor of the people who are affected by COVID-19. We share some experience of uh, the working in the Thammasat Field Hospital and some paper talking about the uh, indicators of severity of COVID-19 uh, by, uh, uh, by, by exploring the gastrointestinal symptom, how to interpret it uh, about the severity of COVID-19. This is an example about research work of our faculty. And the third thing is about health service. We uh, work very close with uh, Thammasat University Hospital we create the Thammasat Field Hospital all together and our staff, our uh, instructor, especially the one who experienced in infectious disease control, uh, in uh, chest disease, uh, work with the Thammasat USA Hospital very close and, and uh, they are volunteer to serve people who are affected by COVID-19. This is the major role of our faculty. But, but uh, the last thing that i like to tell you all is about the uh, uh, extra from the main mission of our faculty. The, the most important thing is about taking care of our own people. The Faculty of Medicine, Thammasat University, uh, launched the policy, the protocol, how to taking, take, taking care of our people, such as the instructor, uh, I provide the protection device for the staff, for the instructor, for the student. We provide the uh, money 
to uh, uh, health because, as we know, that the COVID-19 affect everyone uh, very hard at that time. We are all suffer in every aspect of our daily life. So, so we have the uh, policy to help the people in the faculty. We provide the insurance for COVID-19 for everyone. Uh, we provide the, uh, the fund for everyone to do the research, to provide the uh, IT equipment for online learning, for working from home uh, policy. So, so this is what uh, we did in the past year for COVID-19 confrontation. And uh, last year, uh, we expect to celebrate our uh, 30 years old anniversary last year, but instead of celebrating, but we have to suffer and fight with COVID-19. But, but the best thing occur, happened as well. We can get through the disease uh, very well. We, are very, we were very happy all together and hope that uh, we will get past and uh, everything will getting better and better from now on. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, uh, John Dilo, for giving us the sharing about the experience to deal with the, the COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Dilok still stay with us until the, the end of the session to answer the question to we will come all the question. You can uh, bring out the question into the, the chat uh, and then we'll be gathering the question and uh, get back to the participant again. So uh, we go on with the, the second speaker. Uh, the second speaker, she is the Dean of the Faculty of the Public Health in the Thammasat University. Uh, associate uh, Professor Dr. Sasithorn Devdakanporn. Uh, she will give the multidisciplinary management of the COVID-19 in Thailand for us. Welcome, Dr. Sasithorn, please. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. This is my great pleasure to share with you on the topic of multidisciplinary management of COVID-19 in Thailand. As a representative of Faculty of Public Health, we have the role in prevention and control of all kinds of diseases, uh, both communicable and non-communicable disease. And uh, of course, we learn a lot from the case of COVID-19 this year. In terms of multidisciplinary, uh, we have experience in both official and unofficial multidisciplinary management of COVID-19. Let me talk with the left side, the, the left hand side concerning uh, official multidisciplinary management of COVID-19. It is uh, the good timing to exercise the Communicable Diseases Act, BE 2558 or AD 2015, because this act states and authorized the appointment of three levels of Communicable Disease Committees. One is national level, National Communicable Disease Committee. The second one is provincial level, Provincial Communicable Disease Committee, and the third one is Bangkok Communicable Disease Committee. Let me talk about the national level committee that uh, consists of several ministries and concerned parties. The chair of the committee is the Minister of Public Health, and the secretary is the Director General of Department of Disease Control. And uh, the several ministry that concern is Ministry of Defense, Foreign Affairs, Transport, Interior, Labor, Education, Public Health, together with Medical Council of Thailand, Thailand Nursing and Midwifery Council, the Medical Technology Council, and Private Hospital Associations. Uh, and uh, for the, re the right hand side, for in official, uh, multidisciplinary management. We found that in official management, they can synergize the impact of uh, the management system a lot. 
It is a civil society organization, village health volunteer, NGO, private enterprise, and people or civil society. And uh, with the experience last year, we found that this inofficial management give the key success to stop COVID-19. Can you click for me? No, back. One slide back, please. Okay, uh, let me show you the photos of activities in the community. The first one is, uh, this is official management uh, concerning public health officers and local administrative organization. They went to the community and do uh, laboratory screening and investigation. The next one is village health volunteers that uh, they are in the community to help community screening and this is the key success in case of Thailand. I think this is only uh, Thailand that have uh, village health volunteer with working closely in the community. This photo showing NG, NGO work, for example, Supernimit Foundation, they have a uh, Burmese translator and to do home visit and give health education to uh, the Burmese workers in Thailand. And the last photo showing here, what you can see here, of course, this is the monk. Every time we have crisis in Thailand, uh, of course the victim and the people who get uh, the effect of crisis, they got a big trouble of mental health, so the monk can go to the community and give in terms of psychological support. Uh, instead of uh, the Department of Mental Health also give a big hand to that community also. Let's see uh, my last slide. Uh, we, I would like to share with you the National Health Assembly in Thailand. And last year, the, our faculty have joined and uh, helped handle this assembly in Thailand on the theme of participatory health crisis management in case of pandemics, not specific uh, in only COVID-19. Uh, the National Health Am Assembly is the process of the private and uh, the related public uh, agency, I mean government, to join together and have the forum to share experience and knowledge to learn to each other and come up with the healthy public policy. And the last year, National Health Assembly gave the six important resolutions to us. Uh, the first one is the relevant authorities should integrate management to prepare resources of the health service system. And uh, we should uh, call for the international cooperation and build strong engagement from all sectors in order to manage the health crisis by using lessons learned from COVID-19 pandemic. The second resolution is to manage communication, public relations and information systems in order to communicate accurately, quickly and timely because we found a lot of infodemic that give the fake news a lot. The third one is to provide adequate manpower and infrastructure for surveillance, disease investigation, autopsy, prevention, treatment and control of the spread of the disease, and monitoring the situation and trends of the outbreak. The resolution number four is to set up measures to reduce health impact that uh, uh, also, not only the impacts of health, but also economic impact, social and environment impacts that occurred during and after the health crisis. Number five of the resolution is to create mechanisms and policies to support knowledge, management, research and innovation development in order to create new knowledge, timely and innovations in preventing illness and death from the pandemics. The last resolution is to provide health networks, civil society organizations and related agencies. 
in promoting and campaigning for people self-care to follow the guidelines for prevention and control the disease strictly. All five or all six resolutions are in the full report and sent to the related agency to go in the practice in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sassiton, to give us the uh, overall the policy for the uh, pandemic in the country. So let's move to the next speaker. Uh, the next speaker associate uh, Professor Dr. Tilanut Hanirathesai. She is the Dean of the uh, Faculty of Nursing Thammasat University to give us uh, the disciplinary management of the COVID-19 in the Faculty of the Nursing. Please, Dr. Tilanut. Thank you very much for the introducing and good afternoon everybody. It's my great pleasure to have a chance to share experience from Faculty of Nursing, Thammasat University. Uh, next slide. For Faculty of Nursing, according to the review and our point of views, the pandemic of COVID-19 affects the, the pandemic of COVID-19 affects the dis disruption of education system, change in uh, workplace and work system, and also affects the psychological health problems may be caused by lockdown or curfew policy, or maybe loss of job and economics, economic effects. Uh, the people may be respond by having infection, fear, anxiety, and depression occur in our student staff and uh, the person in community. Uh, therefore, therefore, all of these changes brought to pressing needs or challenge for us to innovate and implement alternative way of education strategy and also to develop a project or a new model to help the students that can learn safety and happily and also help the people to adapt that in this situation stay healthy and safety in new normal. In this occasion, I would like to present the major strategy management. First, the first one, it is about the teaching and learning uh, management. In order that we can manage, that the student can learn, or we can arrange the teaching and learning to the student or the level, and the student can learn and practice as schedule and can graduate on time. So we, uh, we decide to have the teaching and learning platform uh, and also have many kind of method of teaching and learning by using technology such as Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or WebEx, or many kind of, of learning like a case presentation, workshop, mapping, and case presentation, certainly we have to apply and using the social distance classroom and also the uh, public health measure uh, to prevent the COVID-19 infections. And in the, in, in the part of the clinical and learning and practice in the hospital, we also uh, arranged and provided uh, and developed the simulation lab. It is the laboratory nursing lab that uh, very similar to and the same as practice in the clinical in the hospital. How, however, we arranged the protocol and the model to uh, allow the, the student to practice in the hospital. We developed the uh, protocol and the regulations with the collaboration with uh, the Thammasat Hospital, uh, such as the regulation that the student have to come back from home 
and uh, evaluate or assess the TU COVID list of COVID-19. And also the student have to, uh, to do the cell quarantine for t at least 10 or 14 days before going to practice in the clinical practice in the hospital. And during the practice, the student have to comply with the uh, public health measure very strictly, such as wearing surgical masks all the time during practice, maintain the social distance, and washing their hand regularly. Moreover, the student have to continuously monitor their temperature and observe uh, any abnormal change that may, may be occur. In this way, our students can learn and practice happily and safely and can practice as scheduled. And in, and in the other way, the management that we, that we have did in the community level, our one of faculty developed the project this is uh, the, we, the name of the project is the University to Tambun. This is an, in, an economic integration project funded by Ministry of High Education, Science, Research and Innovation. The purpose of, the purpose of this study is to develop and initiate the career in the community to create and develop a creative economy. This is a, like an increased tourism in the communities to use knowledge, helping for communities service, like a healthcare service uh, via the technology. And the last one is to promote the circular economy. This project is operated by Dr. Eguma and her teams. And it, this is also the activity that integrate the practicum of the master nursing student in psychological and psychiatric nursing to healthcare team which uh, implement in the Tambon, Tambon in Samkok area. And also they do the uh, research project at the same time. What do they do in this project? They are four sectors of the, the, the project, but we focus on the healthcare service. This project, the, uh, they do starting with the need assessment and screen the mental health of the people. And after that, they uh, launch the telehealth and the chatbot for the people in the community. The next slide. Uh, in, after the, the survey, we know that the people in the community need how to, uh, how to maintain or prevent or promote their health and wellness and how to do the state management and how to take care of the older adults. Uh, we do the telehealth and chatbot about the uh, education and how to take care of the older adult and to train in occupation in community to reduce living expense and increase income. This is all the project that we did. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thilmut. Uh, then I will move to the next speaker. Uh, she is the faculty, uh, the dean of the faculty of Aliu Health Sciences, uh, Associate uh, Professor Dr. Paiwan Satanun. Uh, she will give a talk about the, uh, share about the COVID-19 experience from the faculty of Aliu Health Sciences. Please, uh, Dr. Paiwan. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Sombat, uh, for the nice introduction. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, as the Dean of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, uh, I'm here to uh, share what we have experienced and learned uh, in the situation of COVID-19. 
the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Thomas University, as one of faculty in Health Sciences Center. As the name suggests, our faculty comprise of several uh, health care professions. Currently, the faculty offering six bachelor degree programs covering uh, medical technology, physical therapy, uh, sports and exercise sciences, sport management, sport coaching, and radiological technology. We are also offering several postgrad programs, including biomedical sciences and forensic sciences. The faculty continues to grow with the diversity of professions, staff, and wide range of research interests, as well as the standard healthcare services. In 2020, there were wide-ranging uh, planned activities which turned to be a challenge um, in the situation of the world COVID-19 pandemic. The situation led us uh, to consider ways of responding to challenges and ways to find opportunities. And as an academic organization, our key role are to provide high-quality education and to create high standard research as well as to promote research innovation for community. These two years have been challenged not only for the faculty staff but for all our students. I admire their determination, their effort to adapt, adjust and overcome all the challenges in this uncertain situation. A number of activities, both academic and non-academic, have occurred as a new normal activities and weird uh, different or new kinds of technologies like as the online or virtual approaches successfully. And one of these is the opening of our AHH student TU channel on the YouTube. So feel free to follow and subscribe to our channel. In terms of research and innovation, last year, five of our laboratories, including molecular bio microbiology, drug research and development, hematology, and molecular diagnostic laboratory, received Tamasa University as uh, Standard Laboratory Award. And all the laboratories served both for teaching and research activities, and not only for our students and staff, but can be shared to staff from other faculties as well. There are several research related to COVID-19. For example, one of our rising researcher, Dr. Jirapong, received uh, funding from the National Council of from the National Research Council of Thailand for his project on the identifying antigen for novel uh, coronavirus and developing um, antibody detection kit. And Dr. Gon Anong, whom has uh, her expertise in respiratory physical therapy, received funding from the National Science and Technology Development Agency on her project in uh, developing the respiratory muscle testing training device. Another important part of the faculty is the healthcare services, which consists of three units, including medical technology research and service unit physical therapy and hydrotherapy unit, and sport science and sport rehabilitation unit. Our healthcare service serve not only a high standard clinical service, but also serve as a great resource for research and academic activities. The molecular technology, the medical technology research uh, and service unit has achieved the ICE SO accreditation with guarantee um, the quality, customer uh, satisfaction, and recognition of the competency of laboratory. Regarding the COVID-19, since last year, 
the unit served re, uh, real time RT PCR for detecting the virus caused the COVID 19, in which we was the first eight laboratory accredited um, proficiency testing by the Department of Medical Sciences, the Ministry of Public Health of the country. Currently, we also provide a screening test for COVID-19 by antibody rapid test at the on-site service. For example, at the graduation ceremony of Thammasat University, State Railway of Thailand, Ministry of Education, Jan Gesem Rajapat, and Sukho Thai Thammasat Open University. The other two units of the healthcare services, the physical and hydrotherapy unit and sports science and sport rehabilitation unit, have their role in health promotion and rehabilitation, in particular in uh, pulmonary endurance and fitness. However, during the situation of COVID-19, when personal contact has been avoided, could be a limitation for delivering um, health promotion activities. Therefore, the faculty have support health promotion activity delivered by new normal activities, as well as uh, on virtual or online approaches. So last month, on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of the faculty, uh, AHHTU channel has opened and Please feel free to follow and describe our and subscribe to our channel too. So that's all uh, what summarized from our experience during the COVID-19 situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pai Wan. Uh, so I move on to the next session uh, from the Dean of the Faculty of the Pharmacy, Thammasat University. Uh, his uh, associate, uh, Dr. Aram Jesadaya Mehta from the faculty of the pharmacies. You will share with us about the experience of the COVID-19 uh, in the faculty. Please welcome. Good afternoon, and thank you, the organizing committee, for, invite for, my, for the invitation uh, to join this uh, conference. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, to the audience uh, some of the pharmacists' role during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, having this uh, uh, problem, whether or uh, what, what does the pharmacist do during the COVID-19, I have done some public search and using the terms like pharmacist or pharmacy and coronavirus or COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 and low or responsibilities. Uh, surprisingly, I come up with 773 articles on the PubMed. Uh, among these articles, 681 articles were excluded because on the review of the title and abstract and 92 articles were reviewed and because of the limited um, span I have. So uh, I have chosen six articles uh, for review. So what are the pharmacist's role and responsibility during the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, I have found a lot of studies, a lot of reports from the US, United States, uh, from China, because China is the first country to have the COVID-19. Uh, the Middle East, surprisingly, like Jordan, Saudi Arabia, uh, Europe, Asians, and I'm very glad to see that there's one paper from Thailand, and most of the report of the study are reported for pharmacists in the hospital or community pharmacy settings. So what are the reported roles and responsibility of pharmacists during the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, the first one that I have always seen in the papers uh, is uh, they ensure effective supply of medication and drug storage management. Of course, this is the most important role of pharmacists. Uh, they have to make sure that the supply of medication is sufficient, especially uh, antiviral medication like favipiravir and lemdesivir, which is often used uh, for patients with COVID-19. And this is also applied to our country also. Pharmacists have to make sure that 
uh, in certain patients, uh, if they really need it, uh, and that's severe, they, they really have to have it. Uh, the second thing I have been observed during the, in these papers are the telepharmacy services. Uh, telepharmacy services are provided both in hospital setting and community pharmacies. So not only hospital, but also community pharmacy, they have done uh, the telepharmacy practices. They also provide that information to the healthcare professional, and they're trying to correct misinformation to patients and customers about the COVID-19. And I, I am sure that at, at this time, they're probably going to have to uh, correct misinformation about the vaccine. Uh, they have to prepare sanitizer and disinfectants uh, as an extemporaneous preparation. Uh, I believe that during the first round of epidemic, um, we don't, we're not prepared enough to have enough sanitizer and disinfectants, so pharmacists have to prepare them freshly, like alcohol gel, uh, to disinfect the, 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 the surface and the equipments. Uh, and I'm surprised to see that um, a lot of a lot of a lot of study have reported that pharmacists are also included as a member of emergency preparedness and emergency response team. And to look further, I have found that in Thailand, uh, pharmacist is already appointed as an emergency operation center member, EOC. Uh, they have to uh, look at the supply of medication and manage the, the medication if that deem necessary to the, to the emergency response. And finally, they, they are appointed as a part of a clinical trial team, and I hope to see this in the future in Thailand too. So uh, telepharmacy is a new work. It's not new. It has been done uh, for quite some time. So I'm looking at the Thai Pharmacy Council statement on standard of telepharmacy practice. Uh, the Thai Pharmacy Council have stated that uh, this telepharmacy practice needs to be conducted by person who licensed to be a pharmacist. Uh, then during the telepharmacy, uh, they need patient registration, they need record of patient history and service that they provided. They need digital technology to provide patient distance service, and they need to record all the service that they provide. And uh, confidentiality is emphasis. Patient interview and duck delivery service. Uh, they need to control the temperature. Uh, the right person needs to receive the medication, the tracking system, and the prevention of medication loss during the delivery service. I think that uh, all the pharmacists need to know this. And the last slide, I'd like to talk about uh, one of the paper from Thailand. I'm very glad to see one of the paper from Thailand. Uh, clinical pharmacists in Atlama Tipadi Hospital also provide pharmaceutical services for COVID-19 patients. Uh, this state that they use telemonitoring using the computerized vision order entry or CPOE system. What, what are they doing? They are doing therapeutic drug monitoring, like they monitor the anticoagulant use. Uh, they did the individualized drug dosing for special population like obesity patients, uh, patients on the CRRT, ECMO, and hemoabsorption. They detect drug-related problem in critically ill patients and also uh, they, do the, they did the medication reconciliation in patients with many underlying diseases. And lastly, I want to summarize. Pharmacists participate as a healthcare professional uh, in multidisciplinary team in fighting with COVID-19. Several roles and responsibility have been reported in the literature. And I hope that pharmacists will maintain their professional standards of pharmacy practice. And they have to be remain up to date on the relevant information during this pandemic. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Aram, for the sharing of the experience from the pharmacy. Uh, so uh, the next speaker uh, is uh, Assistant Director from the Thammasat University Hospital, uh, Professor Dr. Kongkiet Kun Kantalakorn. He will uh, share the good experience from the management of the COVID-19 in Thammasat University Hospital with us, please, Professor Kongkiet. 
thank you. I'm uh, acting on the behalf of the hospital director, uh, Dr. Prehato Udom. Uh, I would like to report the performance and then the, our experience in Thammasat University Hospital regarding this uh, COVID-19 situation. Uh, our hospital is a 700-bed uh, hospital. It's a tertiary care hospital. And then we have the dedicated uh, resources for the COVID patient. We have negative pressure, cohort ward, isolation room, and then we have the extended Thammasat U University Field Hospital. This is our current situation. But before uh, we go, in, before we, uh, uh, what we have today, we have um, many uh, obstacles and opportunities. When the outbreak started uh, about over a year ago, uh, we kind of uh, panic, and then we need to have the war room every day, okay, at least for the first um, five or six months, and then after that we have uh, come down to once or uh, twice a week. At the beginning, there's some problem about the diagnosis, especially uh, getting the uh, specimen or uh, the swab from, from the patient, and then we have to build our infrastructure rapidly to uh, meet the demands and or um, potential uh, outbreak in, in, in nationwide. Then um, we need to build our capacity first. This is the updated or the new uh, modular unit for our swap unit. Um, this unit has been uh, highly denoted, uh, donated from Her Royal Highness Princess Mahajaki Sirinthorn via Achai Patana Foundation. This helps us a lot for uh, getting the specimen safely for patients and also for the healthcare personnel. This is an EID clinic, uh, which is the uh, outside uh, of the main hospital in order to screen patients who has a high risk or patient under investigation to be screened and treated um, similar to the ARI clinic elsewhere. But um, this has been newly, uh, newly built and renovated from the old building of the uh, TMB bank. Regarding the intensive care unit, uh, this is the new um, respiratory care unit. We call it Banpu Respiratory Care Unit, which is donated uh, from the Banpu and Midpon Company. Uh, we have 12 beds for uh, the patient, and then we uh, provide a service for uh, severe COVID patient, and then we're still having a COVID patient in and out of this unit. Uh, this is dedicated to the uh, patient, not only in uh, our hospital, but we have get a lot of referrals from uh, other hospital or uh, other regions from Thailand. For a regular uh, patient or non-severe patient, uh, we have renovated our uh, hospital with the dedicated wing, uh, at least uh, three wards to uh, meet with the patient demand, whether uh, it's an isolation room, negative pressure, or a cohort ward for observation for my patient. Uh, look at the, at the number for the current or the second episode of the infection. We have uh, cumulative cases coming for screening about 3,200 patients under investigation for 1,400, which is a lot of number. Uh, comparing with the uh, previous episode of uh, outbreak. In two months, we found a COVID positive patient in our hospital, our screening lab, uh, 47 patients. Uh, this uh, success is not coming from uh, our hospital personnel itself. That's a lot of donation for COVID patient and our personnel, whether it's uh, coming from um, private or uh, public uh, sector such as food, medical supply, personal items, and other things. Now we are um, focusing on the Thammasat uh, Field Hospital. It has been open since uh, 23rd of March uh, 2020 and has been operated for two months. And then we closed it down with the second uh, episode of this outbreak. We opened it again in um, January, and we just recently closed it uh, two days ago. Uh, from the first uh, outbreak, you can see that uh, the COVID positive who has been referred to the uh, field hospital is only 38, but this episode, two months, we have 271 patients, and the total uh, cases 
including the PUI is 311. Um, this number is quite a lot because each patient stay in the uh, field hospital at least two weeks, sometimes up to four weeks. That, that means we need to spend a lot of effort, personnel and dedication from all the patients and uh, personnel involved. In order to make this uh, field hospital worse, uh, the re-innovation and then the innovation from other places also uh, are helpful. We need to have the internet uh, or uh, CCTV or connecting uh, every service all together to make it uh, possible. We also have the backup. Uh, that means the, our main hospital needs to be a, a backup for the patient as well. At least we have come uh, a lot uh, for the current situation. Nonetheless, this pandemic is still ongoing and then our commitments for patients and the uh, society remains high. We will continue our uh, effort and doing everything for uh, our patient, whether it's today or tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kongkit, for sharing just the uh, experience from the Thammasat University Hospital. And please give the excuse for the two deans uh, from our Health Science Center, uh, Professor Dr. Adit Tassanalong, the dean of the, uh, the Chulapon International School of Medicine that cannot appear here, and also uh, associate uh, Professor Dr. Samdeng Ingram, the Dean of the Faculty of the Dentistry that are not able to show up here also. But anyway, uh, Professor, I did uh, just have the short uh, video clip to share us about the experience of the COVID-19 from the uh, CICM. The, please uh, watch the uh, video clip from Professor Adit. All the societies before. The most important thing to change in this crisis is our mindset. The mindset is very important to change. Everyone is probably used to do things the old-fashioned ways. But as you know, because of global pandemic, it's impossible to do that. Each person must 
compromise in order to move on further. How can we do that? CICM start by teaching online class along with working from home method and by doing some. CICM has created a digital disruption for all of staff and students. We have been used so many platforms starting from Microsoft Teams, Zoom, WebEx, and other several activities. Our students can study anywhere and anytime through Thamasa University Moodle system. They can use the learning resource during outbreak of COVID-19. CICM also are real-time conference teaching by using the newest technologies for instant anatomy table and a pathological scanner. By all means, we have created a smart classroom for all of our students. In this smart classroom, we have focused on team-based learning also. Not only we have done this all my teaching, but we also start doing online examination as well. Although there were some problems here and there, the overall system result can come out brilliantly. So we have planned to do to do develop a much more successful and convenient examination system. We develop guidelines for staff and students on online examination. As on you may already know, the telemedicine has been one of the most talked about topics in the century. That is why CICM plans to improve our digital health platform in the near future. We have planned to do all of this in the new hospital at Thamasa University, Pattaya campus. Lastly, because of the pandemic, some of you may think that this is the end of the world. There is no way we are getting out of this. Nevertheless, I would like to think of as an opportunity to push myself and to push my limits furthermore into making the CICM better. Thank you very much for your attention. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have the questions. Enjoy the conference and have a happy time. Thank you, uh, Professor Adit, for the video clip and uh, we come to the end of the, the session uh, we have uh, some question that uh, we would like uh, all the deans to uh, give the opinion and the, the answer for the question so uh, you know about the new emerging already the term of the, the new normal uh, the new normal practice is kind of the standard practice in uh, our society now. So uh, we may would like to know that uh, how the new normal practice would affect to uh, the faculty or the, what is the new normal practice uh, that should be implemented into the faculty. Uh, so I will start uh, with the professor, uh, Associate Professor Dilok first about the question, please. Okay, I think uh, uh, the terms of new normal, uh, we are very familiar to this term since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, so I think it's only one example of the situation that we have to confront with uh, uh, the, the fact that we all know is that uh, nothing is impossible, 
because uh, the, the, the emerging disease like this, we only learn from the, the text that uh, we have a pandemic of uh, Spanish flu like uh, 100 years ago. And uh, we never think that we will confront such a situation in our life. So, so this is, uh, uh, I think that the key, uh, key success factor that we can live with the problem like this is not only one situation. Uh, we have to adapt ourselves. We have to cooperate with each other. We have to learn. Uh, continuous learning is very important so we can learn from our experience. Uh, for example, after the COVID-19 passed, I think uh, we should have a lesson learned from COVID-19 and uh, make the knowledge for the, the let, later generation how we can cope with this situation. So, so I will not go in depth about the new normal in, in, in the question, but, but I, I just, just like to share that uh, uh, the important thing that we can get through it is our cooperation, our adaptation, our continuous learning. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Dirok, for sharing the idea of the new normal. So how about, uh, about the public health? Uh, in terms of the public health, do you have any kind of idea? Uh, uh, Dr. Satiton, please. Uh, as the Dean Dilok suggests that uh, as public health personnel, and we, we have to teach students also. So may I separate into two uh, types of prevention and control? The first one is personal life. We have to be a good role model to the others and to the students. So personal life means hygiene. Uh, we have to keep on hygiene uh, personal, like uh, eat good food, good cooking, hot food, uh, use, use our own spoon when we eat something with the other persons, and uh, always washing hands. And in terms of public health, if you know the route of entry of the disease or microorganism, you just close that route of entry. And in case of COVID-19, you know that uh, the microorganism can get through the body by breathing by mouth or by touching the hand to the microorganism and use that hand touch our face, no, I mean the mouth, nose or eyes that uh, the disease can transmit it to, to our body, then prevent those. For example, using masks, always, always washing hands, something like that. And this is a, uh, the way of practice to prevent and control the disease. And as the working life, since we teach students to be a public health personnel in the future, not only to be a role model, but students should learn and experience uh, the real life that have occurred already. The COVID-19 is a very good students to them, and they learn how to uh, spend their life with those diseases, and they know how to prevent and control. And this is our role in public health. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Satiton. And also, uh, nursing is a uh, one of the important uh, practice that uh, we would like to know to hear from Dr. Tiranusika, Dean of the Faculty of the Nursing, about the, how about the new normal nursing or something that nurse can be changed. Okay, for, for the uh, pandemic of COVID-19 uh, just passed and uh, we have faced, so, so we learned a lot about how to prepare ourselves and, and when it occurs, it's important that we have to inform our students and our personnel and communications to prevent from uh, the psychological that may occur, like a fear of infection. So right now, uh, I think all of the personnel and staff uh, know about how to do that. And I agree from uh, public health, Dean of Public Health, that uh, the personal hygiene is, is really important thing that everybody should be concerned and strictly uh, like uh, uh, wearing masks and 
and social distance and something is, is very important for the social response to prevent from transmission of COVID-19. This is very important point for nursing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Tiranut. And also the uh, faculty of the Ali Health Sciences, they have the, a lot of uh, medical personnel involved in the, to the uh, treat the, the COVID-19 patient. And also the new normal practice for the Ali Health Sciences should be important. Uh, give uh, some idea from uh, Dr. Plywan, please. I think from what we, we all have learned from um, COVID-19 situation since last year was like, as the, the Dean of the Medicine said, that the, we have learned a lot like the way that we need to uh, adapt uh, to the situation. At the first stage of the COVID-19, it was really uncertain situation with really limited uh, knowledge about it. and. Also, of course, really limited resource to deal with it. But we we all have passed those uh, phases. So uh, I think the important thing is uh, we 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 need to learn what we call new normal. This day might be not the new normal for the next uh, pandemic situation in the future. But but the skill or the uh, competency in terms of adaptation or problem solve or problem analysis is very important that we, we need to um, know that this these kinds of uh, skill and teamwork uh, especially uh, the multidisciplinary teamwork is uh, very important that that would uh, lead us to to uh, overcome or whatsoever will come in the future thank you Thank you, uh, Dr. Paiwan. And also for the pharmacists, they need to learn the telepharmacist now and to, to be the new normal for a pharmacy, I think that uh, should be important for the all pharmacists over the country to learn that. Please uh, discuss uh, some idea about the new normal for the pharmacies, uh, Dr. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the new normal, uh, at the Faculty of Pharmacy is probably uh, like all other deans have said, we uh, still have to perform our function, uh, being productive and uh, doing our mission as usual. At the same time, we have to protect ourselves from contracting the disease. And so we have adapt uh, to a lot of uh, things like teaching and uh, providing academic services. We nowadays, uh, provide academic services to the online services, like this uh, conference, for example. So uh, I think this, this is quite new to the faculty of pharmacy, but we learn how to uh, do it better and better. And I believe that in the future, we're going to uh, perform well in terms of providing information to the profession like pharmacy, like uh, they should uh, perform their uh, function and also to the public. So I think this is uh, the new normal for our faculty of pharmacy. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Alam. And uh, finally, for the hospital, that is uh, one of the uh, most I think the first uh, impression is about the contact precaution or universal precaution. I think both patients and the healthcare personnel knows that they are becoming just normal and then there's nobody uh, worried about it, but it is a new practice right now. However, for the uh, practice of medicine or uh, the hospital uh, policy, we are now adapting more and more technology into the day-to-day uh, -day activities in terms of um, application for the appointment, computerized system for the uh, documentation, the uh, dispensing, the uh, medications, things like that. They are, they are moving quite quickly to uh, minimize the 
contact uh, process or to move the patient faster, not to spend too much time in the hospital waiting and then have the high chance of contacting the disease from, from someone else. The other thing is about the resource management. Uh, at the beginning, we are kind of panic that uh, we need to provide a lot of resources, we have to prepare this and that. But now it's becoming normal that we know how to handle the situation. As well as to uh, look at COVID as an, just another disease and then we know how to deal with it. We prepare ourselves, our staff to uh, cope with the situation. So uh, during the uh, second wave is kind of uh, just another process or another obstacle to go through, not uh, dealing it with, with the panic um, phenomenon as in the previous uh, outbreak. And then I think we are uh, coping with this and then we hope to make it uh, faster and quicker to overcome this situation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, the answers that give us a lot of uh, information and so we come to the end of the conference. Uh, please uh, stay with us. And uh, maybe for the next two years, we hope that we can uh, make the conference again. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, all the participants can enjoy the conference and uh, get uh, a lot of the knowledge from the conference. We do know that uh, the conference is now uh, we need to uh, pronounce that uh, the online should be on the track, but uh, in the next uh, two years, maybe we can uh, come together to join and uh, be with the face-to-face -face, uh, again in the next conference. We hope. Thank you.